Hey everyone, this video is about the Sharp PC E500's an advanced pocket computer from 1989. And the E500 was really unique since it was a hybrid between a basic pocket computer and an engineer's calculator. And as we'll see, it was packed with a tremendous amount of functionality and supported many I.O. options. And it was, along with its successor, the E500S. One of the most powerful basic pocket computers released by Sharp, or indeed any manufacturer. Now the aspect that makes the E500 interesting is its hackability, and there was a considerable developer community, and there are many developer tools available, such as a memory dumper, a simple assembler, a cross assembler, and a compiler for a C-like language available. A lot of the documentation for these tools is in Japanese, uh, but there's also a lot of information available online in English and other languages. So physically at 20 by 10 centimeters, the E500 is quite a large device, uh, with, but with its plastic body, uh, it is lighter than it looks at only 250 grams, and it feels quite sturdy. Uh, the E500 has a 240 by 32 pixel LCD uh, screen that can display four rows and 40 columns of characters. And being able to display 40 columns in particular is very impressive. Uh, and it's considerably more than most basic pocket computers and it makes coding quite pleasant. Uh, the display contrast on the E500 was not as good as its predecessor, the E500S. Uh, but there is a contrast wheel on its right side that can be uh, used to find the best setting. Uh, the keyboard on the E500 uses rubber keys, uh, but they do have a click to them which makes the keyboard reasonably satisfying to use. And the keyboard is divided into four sections. Uh, there's the usual QWERTY style keyboard uh, and a number pad. Uh, and th but there's also a section of programmable function keys which are used to navigate menus and also a section for scientific operations. Uh, the keyboard uses a gold shift key, uh, and there's also control and caps locks, and a key for enabling Japanese character input. There's also a reset switch nestled in uh, the keyboard. On the left side of the E500 is a 11-pin connector that links it to a PC, a disk drive, a cassette drive, or printer. And on the right side is a 15 pin uh, serial I.O. connector for connecting to a colour printer or plotter. Uh, so if we turn the device over, uh, we can see that there's a latch uh, that we can undo uh, that provides access to a uh, compartment for a five, uh, 8, 16 or 32k RAM card. Uh, there's also a uh, battery backup compartment uh, housing uh, one lithium battery required to back up internal memory. Uh, the regular battery compartment houses four uh, AAA batteries. And internally, the E500 uh, uses an SC62015 uh, 2.3 megahertz CPU and has a 120K uh, system and 30T uh, ROM and 32K internal RAM. Uh, and the E500 has a rigid plastic case uh, that slides into uh, the grooves on its top and bottom. And the E500 has a lot of modes, and interestingly one of them is a calculator mode that acts like a traditional scientific calculator. And you can enter this via the main menu in selecting Cal. Uh, and here uh, it supports a single uh, number view. Uh, and you can uh, apply scientific operations in the usual postfix style. Uh, Cal mode also supports uh, hexadecimal arithmetic. Uh, so here I can uh, enter hex numbers uh, into my formula. But I'm not sure who would use Cal modes because the E500 also supports a basic run mode, which in my mind is a lot more convenient for calculations. And so we can uh, select basic from our main menu. And here we can enter full arithmetic expressions and hit enter to evaluate them. And you can use scientific functions uh, using basic call syntax.
And run mode also supports uh, history playback uh, via the left and right arrow keys. Run mode also supports double precision mode, uh, which we can enter via the def double command. Uh, and here we get uh, 20 characters of precision. Uh, and of course, you can assign uh, values to variables in uh, run mode uh, and use those in expressions. Uh, and the E500 supports variable names of up to 30 characters. Uh, and like most sharps, uh, you can chain calculations. Uh, or you can use the answer key uh, to refer to uh, the previous value. Uh, but one of the best features of run mode is support for AER formula. And AER stands for Arithmetic Expression Reserve, uh, which is Sharp's formula programming language. And the AER formula editor is hidden uh, at the bottom of the main menu. And so here you can define uh, constant expressions or functions that operate on parameters. Uh, and you can use the up and down arrow key uh, to scroll through uh, the defined AER definitions. Uh, so here I've got uh, my full distance equation, uh, and I've also defined a uh, constant, uh, Planck's constant. Uh, and you can, to use these, we can switch back to run mode. And uh, here we can either use a the AER operations interactively uh, using the up down key. Uh, and say if we select our full distance equation, uh, the calculator will prompt us uh, for parameter values. Uh, but we can also uh, reference a uh, formula using the AER statement and then number. Uh, so for example, the full distance equation uh, is a uh, formula 3. Uh, so in basic run mode, uh, we can run that directly uh, by going AER and then 3, and then we can pass a parameter directly to that. And so in this way, the E500 supports a type of uh, user-defined function, uh, which is a powerful feature that it shares with the HP 71B. And so the E500 has 34 built-in applications, and these are organized into a hierarchical system of menus that appear under the fifth element of the main menu. These applications are categorized into mathematics, science, engineering, and statistics. In this particular version, the E500 uses Japanese menu labels, but the actual programs themselves work in English. Uh, there was a version of the E500 that had all English menu labels, so it's worth, worth keeping that in mind if you're seeking one out. And I'll briefly show three of the built-in applications to give an idea about how they work. Uh, so the first app I'll show is the equation solver, which uses Newton's method. And this is in the equation sub-menu of the mathematics menu. And uh, so let's solve a cubic function, uh, x to the power of 3 minus 5, x uh, minus 15. And we'll use the default search criteria. And so I found a solution. And we can use the on key uh, to break out of apps and traverse up the menu hierarchy. Uh, this, another useful one is the Metrics Conversion app, uh, and this app is in the Physics sub-menu of the Sciences menu. And so let's say we wanted to convert 100 kilograms to pounds. Uh, we would choose weight as our category, uh, and we can enter 100 as our value. And so that's quite a handy little app. Uh, the last one I will show is uh, a periodic table app. 
Uh, so this is in the chemistry menu of the science menu. And this app can also list the atomic weights of elements. Uh, but I'll pick the table option. Uh, and here you can use the cursor keys to scroll around the periodic table. And there are many other handy applications, and I'll include a list of all of them in the video description. And the E500 supports an advanced version of BASIC as well as a file system for storing programs and data files. And there's a BASIC button that toggles between run mode and program mode. And I've used the init command to initialize a 10k RAM disk with label E to store data and programs on. And so I can use the files command uh, to list the files that are on E. And so I've got a set of basic programs and also a data file as well. And uh, the E500 uh, supports a single program space in memory, but you can use text labels to effectively support multiple programs as long as they are using different line numbers. And so in run modes, we can use the load command to retrieve programs. And so I'll go ahead and load my first example called uh, birthday.basic. And then if we switch to program mode, we can use the list command uh, to list the source code. And we can hit the down arrow uh, to go into the editor. And so uh, the first routine is called add, and this opens a text file called uh, bds.txt for appending. It then clears the screen and prompts for a name and a birthday. And it prints these out to the file. Uh, and it closes the file and the routine ends. Uh, there's a second routine called get. Uh, this prints uh, and prompts for a name uh, to look up and then uh, iterates through the file and uh, trying to match uh, for that name and then it prints out the associated birthday. And so uh, to run these routines, uh, first we'll go with um, add. So uh, we type in run add uh, and we can enter a name so let's say mark uh, and then mark's birthday and say if we want to look up a birthday uh, we can run the get command uh, and i'll enter uh, an entry i've entered before so let's say bob so that should give you an idea about how files work on the E500. Uh, and if we change the program, we can use the save command uh, to write it back to the basic file. The next example I'll show is a simple program that uses some of the E500's graphic commands. So I'll just load that now. And the program starts by clearing the screen, uh, and it then uses uh, the G cursor command to set the starting coordinate for a dot pattern to be displayed uh, using the G print command. And so the pattern will be drawn uh, starting from X equals 64 and Y equals 20. And uh, the hex string that's assigned to AA defines a sprite like dot pattern. And so the G print will display three of these. Uh, then at line 50, uh, we draw a bounding box for a rectangle uh, defined by two corners. And then line 60 draws a solid rectangle, uh, but it uses a mode where it toggles the existing state of each pixel in the rectangle. And there's a loop that repeats line 60 indefinitely. Uh, so this uh, produces an interesting animation uh, and we can switch back and run it now. And you can see that the rectangle is repeatedly drawn from the top to the bottom line by line and for each line the current pixel state is toggled and so to break the program uh, we can hold on 
uh, and then we can use CLS to clear the screen. And interestingly, the E500 has an eval command that can uh, run the basic interpreter on a string. And this means if you want to, you can easily create your own customized calculator mode. And so I'll load a program called REPL, which shows this. And this is a very simple program uh, that has a loop and it prompts for a line of input. Uh, it then prints out the result of evaluating that string, uh, but before it does that, it converts the result to hex. Uh, and so if we run this program, uh, we'll get a hash prompt. Uh, and so let's say well, we can enter a number, say 100. Uh, and we can see it gets evaluated and converted to 6, 4 hexadecimal. Uh, but we could also say enter a, any basic expression. So let's enter um, 100 plus factorial of uh, 13. And so you could have um, quite a lot of fun creating your own customized calculator. And uh, you can also create custom menus by assigning any basic program to one of the programmable function keys in the engineering menu. And because you can also read keys directly from the keyboard, uh, it's possible to create quite interactive applications similar to the built-in ones, which incidentally are also written in basic. And so in summary, the Sharp PC E500 was a very versatile and powerful basic pocket computer and quite amazing for 1989. Unfortunately, I don't have a cable to connect my device to a computer, so I'm not able to load the assembly language tools that people have created for the device. Uh, but the combination of being an in, uh, engineer's applications and a basic programmable computer makes this device very versatile. And the large resolution of the screen makes it one of the most comfortable pocket computers to program on. Uh, the E500 did have a line of successes, including the E500S, which was released in 1995, and also the E650, which was a similar device with 64K of RAM. Uh, Casio also made uh, their FX 850p and 880p devices that were similar hybrids uh, and also uh, supported engineering uh, applications. <clears throat> and although they did have smaller two-line displays, uh, so I'm quite fond of the E500, and it was one of the most powerful basic pocket computers ever produced and still quite useful to this day. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.